beloved saints. Um, this is for Travis. Travis has been coming to the Church of the Eternally Secure for a while. He is our beloved little brother. And um, I said I, I disagreed with him on something, and I'm going to do an answer to the email. It's um, not anything we, you know, uh, uh, need to butt heads over. But I, I think it's important that we discuss these things. Um, there is, uh, there's a lot of uh, dispensational teachers. Now, with that being said, let me, let me say, dispensation is a biblical term. Um, I disagree with how dispensation is to the connotation of it for some uh, popular teachings dispensation is the dispensing of it just means um a time in which information was dispensed okay so we see god dispensing progressive information and revelation all through scripture now we also see some things that are a mystery so they were progressively revealed through types and shadows and then the fullness of it is revealed later. So you can see that in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Types and shadows point to Jesus all in the Old Testament. Some were nail on the head, uh, such as the verse that says, and the Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. Uh, and Isaiah 53, clearly talking about Christ suffering for the sins of the world. So, um, this is what I see as biblical dispensations, is the dispensing of information and revelation by God uh, throughout time. Dispensation, in the popular view, is that God saved people in different ways and had different gospel messages in different, quote, dispensations. Now, I partly agree that he dealt with people differently, but he's the same God, and there's only been one way of salvation from Genesis all the way to Revelation, because, and I'll tell you why, the Old Testament could not save. It was showing us our need for a Savior. It was to show us God's standards of perfection. So if that was supposed to save man, it failed miserably because it says in scripture, if there had been a law that could have given life, then verily righteousness would have been by the law. It could have, but it, it couldn't because why? We're in fallen flesh and we do not meet God's standard of perfection. That's why he saved us by his grace. So I believe that it's clear Everyone before the cross was saved by the cross. Everyone after the cross also saved by the cross. Some teach that works used to save. We're in a period or a dispensation of grace, the church age. And then later on during this other dispensational teaching of a literal uh, tribulation period of the future, then they'll be saved by faith plus works then too. I don't believe works ever worked. I don't believe they ever will work because... If it be of works, no longer grace. Otherwise, grace is no more grace and vice versa, right? So this is why, um, and now I also understand why someone would come to that conclusion. I do, I do. So I don't mock anyone that comes to that. And quite frankly, if that's what they believe and they got saved, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna have a fit over it. We're not going to heaven because we're theologians. But these are things that we need to discuss. And I will show you why I disagree with it. Now, Travis, I, I got some of your points here and uh, I will discuss them. However, it has to be done in at least two videos because it's just is too long to put in one. So I will divide the mystery part of it uh, from uh, comparing Paul to the other apostles because it seems the, the message I was sent is, only Paul can save. We only read Paul's epistles for Gentile believers to be saved. But I, I don't think that at all. I, I was starting a 
a, a series of the gospel in every Old Testament book and New Testament book. From Genesis to Revelation, I'm going to show you pictures of the gospel and the gospel message itself. Even back to the man picking up sticks on the Sabbath, uh, he was killed. That's a picture of trying to work when God says rest. Um, it brings death to us because we try to work for salvation. We, we don't have it. You see, we, we have to enter into the rest of Christ because he did it for us. So um, I believe uh, that Jesus preached to uh, the dead. Uh, this Old Testament saints and told them it was done, victory was done, and heaven was open for them uh, because they were looking forward to the cross. The Passover is a perfect picture of the gospel. Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Uh, Adam and Eve, uh, an animal was slain, they put on the animal's hide. That was the first picture of Christ um, killed for our sin. And so even then, we also are told that Abraham believed the gospel back then. He believed the same gospel, uh, and he saw Jesus' day and was glad. Uh, and Jesus even said uh, before Abraham was, I am, it proving that he is eternal. He did pre-exist, and he's the bread that came down from heaven and manifested as a human being, as a man. His humanity has a beginning, but he does not. Uh, he always has existed. He's the beginning and the end, the first and last, um, the eternal son of God. So let's go to your points. Okay. So you send me these things in Timothy to show me that Paul is teaching different than Peter. One of the points you make is that Paul says my gospel as opposed to the gospel of the circumcision. Well, what changed isn't the gospel. What changed was the audience to which the gospel was geared towards. Peter was sent to Jewish people and Paul was sent to Gentile people. However, the gospel they preach is the same. You can check it out by going to look at Peter preaching on Pentecost when he tells the Jews to repent because they just crucified Jesus. So <laughs> change your mind about that and believe in him because he is the promised one. And he's the Lord of glory and you crucified him. Then you can see when Peter goes to Cornelius. Now I have videos on both of these. I can't discuss all of that. It'll be two hours long. But go over uh, to where Peter preaches to Cornelius. And it tells you while he's preaching Christ crucified and how he fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies, the Holy Spirit comes down on him. Same thing that happens uh, with Paul and Silas, when with the Philippian jailer, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And he preached Christ to him and his whole house. So Peter and Paul both preached Jesus crucified and risen, but the audience they were sent to was different. So you would talk to a Jew that understood the law differently than you talk to a Gentile that had no knowledge at all of the scriptures. Of course you would. So it's not the gospel message that was different. It's the audience to which they were sent. So my gospel would be going to the Gentiles. That's what Paul's saying. My gospel. In addition, Paul is separating his gospel from the false gospels of the Judaizers, right? Not the gospel they're preaching of circumcision plus Jesus, but my gospel will be, you'll be judged by my gospel, not the one they're preaching. You see that? Okay. Context is really important, I believe, on this. But if, other than that, I'll also show you Jesus and Paul taught the same thing. They taught the gospel of God's grace, Jesus' finished work on the cross. So now you have to understand, before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, God did not overtly lay his plan out. Okay, so it couldn't be said the same way. It says, because if the princes, the principalities, the evil ones knew what Jesus' crucifixion would accomplish, they would have never put to death the Lord of glory. Okay? So, that's why it's not as overtly, clearly stated prior to Paul. Okay? Now, but if you look, you'll see it. Let me just give you a quick example here how Jesus and Paul... They taught the same thing, but in a different way, okay? Because Paul's, Paul's preaching how to be saved. Jesus is preaching how to be saved. 
Come unto, come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I lay down my life for the sheep. Tear down this temple in three days. I will build it up again. So he's preaching the death, burial, and resurrection. I am the bread of life. He says it. If you'd have known who you were speaking to, you would have asked, and I would have given you living water, the Holy Spirit. See, you can see it everywhere. Um, but it's said a little differently. And for that reason, it had to be kind of hidden. Uh, so the enemy wouldn't know what God was going to do. So uh, when you go to, let's just look at a couple things where it shows you Jesus preached about the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven. So did Paul. So let me um, get just a couple of verses here. And you can see other, other uh, uh, apostles. So Philip, for instance, we've got in Acts 8.12. Let, let me pull that. I pulled that up, I think. Acts 8.12. But when, when they believe Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. See, and then Simon believed also and he was baptized. So there you go. You see that? He preached. Now, and we see what Philip preached to the um, eunuch on the way. And uh, he's baptized. So you can see it's the same gospel. Same gospel. It's Jesus, who he is, what he accomplished through his death, burial, and resurrection. And he's preaching the kingdom of God. That's once you're saved and, and you're in Christ, you now live in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Uh, and it says it comes without observation. So it's how the kingdom works. The kingdom is righteousness. It's uh, loving your enemies. It's doing all the things Jesus told us to do. Okay. But that, that is not how you're saved. It's just how the kingdom of God works. You're in, you enter into the kingdom by believing on Christ. You're given the seal of the Holy Spirit of promise. Now you're God's child. Now the kingdom of God is where you dwell. You live within that, in that new man, uh, not the old, the way of the world, right? So you can see here in Acts chapter one uh, that more kingdom of God preaching. It says, until the day he was uh, taken up, this is Jesus. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them for 40 days. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. He tells you things about the kingdom of God, right? Because that was one of the things you said divided them. Yes and no. Because Paul teach the kingdom of God too. We'll show you here for Paul, had determined to sail by Ephesus. This is in Acts chapter 20, starting at 16. Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons." serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Now behold, I go bound in the spirit into Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall, befall me there. Hold on, keep going. Say that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I'm continuing, listen, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. So Paul Preach the gospel of the grace of Christ and the kingdom of God. What did it say? Philip preached the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ. Okay, what did Jesus teach? The kingdom of God. And he also preached himself as the living water, the bread of life, the bread that came down from the real manna from heaven, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, the lamb who took away the sins of the world. 
So uh, they preached the same gospel message, man. Uh, Peter did too. Again, look at those two instances. Him preaching to Cornelius, the Gentile um, uh, centurion in his home uh, when he had the vision of the unclean foods being clean, remember? Uh, which was a picture of him being able to enter into a Gentile's house. It was considered unclean for a Jew to enter there. It would make them ritually unclean. So God's saying, don't call anything clean. I've made clean. Uh, and he used food to show him that. So look at that instance. And then look at what Paul and Silas preached to the Philippian jailer. And look at what Philip te preaches to the eunuch. It's the same gospel message. Look at the gospel message Peter preaches on Pentecost to all those of Israel. You can see it's the same gospel. It's Jesus crucified and risen. Hmm. Now, repentance in that aspect, when Peter tells the Jews to repent, it didn't have anything to do with keeping the law more strictly, repenting of their sin. The sin, it was a sin what they were doing, not believing on Jesus, but the repentance there was to change their mind about wanting Jesus crucified and now put their faith in him as the promised Messiah. Because he said, this same man whom you crucified, he said, you slew him with wicked hands. He is the promised one. He is the Lord of glory. You crucified the Lord of glory. You killed God's son. And they were pricked in their hearts and said, men and brethren, what do we do? Peter said, repent. Change your mind now. Believe on him right? And so they became baptized in his name. 3,000 that day, I believe. Uh, kind of interesting, 3,000 dropped dead regarding the law. Uh, so that was, it's really neat. I think I did a study on it a while back, the difference. But uh, so you can see, kingdom of God, kingdom of God, they're both teaching the same thing. It's just said in a different way. Now, I, I, I just think it's a little, to me, I think it over divides. It makes it like the Bible doesn't work cohesively together, but it's split up. This is for you. This is not for you. I see the gospel everywhere. I see it all over the Old Testament. Um, and you will too. Uh, so let's look at some of the verses, uh, kingdom of God, just a few. Now, all of these, I didn't pull up. I, I go by King James is what I'm used to, but um, I, I, I didn't have time. I just have a whole stack of them written down. And I didn't want to um, have to look, have all these tabs open. Uh, now, one of the things you sent, Travis, is, you know, uh, a bunch in Ephesians. So I'm going to look at that whole section with you, okay? Now, that I may have to go over in the second video, which is about the mystery. The mystery was that Gentiles would be grafted in with believing Jews into the kingdom into Christ, which I believe is, <laughs> I think he is the manifestation of Israel, his firstborn son, Jesus. You know, I call forth my son out of Egypt. I believe that the nation of Israel was a, being called out of Egypt, was a shadow of Jesus being called out of Egypt, his firstborn son, his only begotten son. So uh, sadly, I think many people apply that to national Israel as opposed, you know, a fleshly genealogy thing. Uh, which said doesn't profit anything, instead of seeing that all the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ and that he is the seed of Abraham. So when we are in him, the promises are to us. So, um, and that is whether they're Jew or Greek or Gentile or Jew, there is no more of that. It's one new man in Christ. The mystery was that God was going to redeem all the nations to himself, not just Israel. Israel was a set apart holy nation for the Savior to be born through, to be the keepers of the oracles of God, so that he could verify who he was, and then the world would be brought back to God. Uh, so uh, it's all of us together. There's one sheepfold and one shepherd. So I, I just, I don't want to see division based on nationality. In the body of Christ because we're one in Christ you see and that's where I have an issue with it uh, I think it can get into that and uh, we got to try to see beyond our physical eyes into this the spirit realm and what's being said here so we will go over to Ephesians 3 but uh, I'll need to do that uh, in a separate video because otherwise this will be too long so right now I'm just showing you that Paul he preached the same as the other apostles and Jesus uh, it's just Jesus couldn't overtly be as clear. 
okay? Um, because the, the enemy would have known what he was doing. So you can see in Acts, uh, let's see, I think 29, Philip and other apostles taught the good news of the kingdom. There you go. Uh, let me scroll up. I got a bunch of them written down here. Um, he, Paul, proclaimed the kingdom in Acts 28, 31, the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Acts 28, 23, witnessed them morning till evening, explaining the kingdom of God from Moses and law, the law and the prophets. He tried to persuade them about Jesus. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there, arguing pervasively about the kingdom of God in Acts 19, 8. For the kingdom of God is, let me see, 1 Corinthians, I pulled that up. 1 Corinthians 4, this is Paul speaking, okay? Uh, let's see. Kingdom of God. Let me pull this up. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I got so many things here. Uh, oh, that's Romans 2. First Corinthians 4.20. Let me see. Pull that one up. But the other one is important as well. Okay. So, First Corinthians 4.20. This is Paul speaking. But I will come to you shortly if the Lord will and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. See? Kingdom of God. Jesus preached the kingdom of God. Let's look at more where he preaches it. In Romans, he, the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, Paul says. Uh, and I read to you that whole section in Acts where Paul says he's been preaching the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ. Jesus uh, preaching the kingdom of God. After his suffering, this is Acts 1-3. Yep. Uh, after his suffering, Jesus presented himself and gave many convincing proofs. I gave you that a minute ago where he preached the kingdom of God. Remember for 40 days after. Uh, in Luke 17, it says the kingdom of God is within you. Jesus preaches in Matthew 12, 28, the kingdom of God has come upon you. In Mark 1, 15, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Um, the good news of the kingdom is where God rules and reigns and it's within us. And when we're saved by God's grace through faith, we are in that kingdom and the kingdom is within us. The Holy Spirit dwells within us and we live within its rules and its boundaries and the things that God says is good. That's why we have a peace that surpasses all understanding. We live by the ways God says is pleasing to him. That's our guiding stars. You know, people, I, I like how uh, our brother Matthias says those that followed the stars for navigation. They were ones that keep the stars. We keep the commandments of God, not because we perfectly, literally keep them, but because we keep them. They are our guide. It's what we know to be good or evil based on what God says is good or evil. But furthermore, we have the Holy Spirit to tell us we don't need anybody to give us a list, right? Because we know, and I believe that as Christians, God's standards are even higher than the dead letter of the law. Um, but it, it's, it's, I understand why people think Paul pro taught a different gospel than Jesus and the other apostles. I really do. I really do. Um, I can see how you get there, but I ask you to please, please consider what I've said and, and see the whole picture, see how cohesive God's word is how it works together, how Jesus taught himself as savior, that it's impossible with man, but God, nothing's impossible with him. And that he's the bread of life. He's the, he's the um, lamb that takes away the sin of the world. He, he, he preached himself crucified and risen, just like Paul did. He also shows them even through um, he shows the nation of Israel while still under the bondage of the old covenant that they didn't keep those standards. They thought they did, but they didn't. They, in their heart, they may not have physically done it, but they felt it and wanted to. And because of that, their flesh is wicked and it, they, they're not as righteous as they thought. And neither are they righteous through their genealogy. 
being related to Abraham. That doesn't, because he says, you know, God can make children for Abraham out of the stones. And, and he, he tells them that, you know, those, we're told by Paul, those that are of the faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So you see, you see some Jewish, you see some people in Israel, these, the Sanhedrin, the, the nation of Israel's religious leaders being called brood of vipers and that their father was the devil. And that they didn't know his father. because And they didn't believe Moses. Because if they had believed Moses, they would have believed in him. So it's not genealogy. Say not unto yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. Remember? Because if Abraham was your father, you'd love me. And they hated him. So I'm hoping we can see past that. Um, and that's more of what I'm going to talk to, talk about in part two of your questions. Now, you also wrote, you know, we discussed the my gospel part. It's my gospel, Paul says, because he was geared towards get Gentiles. That's clear. And you do get that. But the message of the gospel, the gospel message that Christ died for his sins, was buried, and rose again the third day to give us everlasting life is the gospel and it's always been the gospel that saves and always will be um, because it says if there was a law that could have given life. Now I see you have this little chart here where it says, okay, gospel one was the king of kings, law, repent, and baptism. Okay. I, I wish they'd have used another word in it. Baptism, water baptism doesn't save, um, but we're baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's how we're saved. Because we're born of God and the water baptism is a picture of that. Okay. But he dealt with Jews differently because they understood what mikvah baths were, ritual cleansing. They understood that, but it, they didn't get saved by water. Okay. It's just a way that they were spoken to different than how these would have been because they, the Gentiles didn't know anything about the Old Testament and the rituals and all of that. So it's going to be presented in a way. Differently. That's why the book of Hebrews shows all those shadows of the Old Testament, how they're all pointing to Christ. It even says the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. I mean, I've got proof that the Old Testament never saved. The works of the Old Testament law never saved. Everlasting life was never offered by the Old Testament. Jesus said, though, well, you heard it said, you, you want to know how to get everlasting life? Keep the commandments. What was he doing? Showing that man that even though he claimed to have kept all them since his youth, he did not. Okay. Nobody has ever kept him. It's not possible. He said it's not possible with man. All right. If there had been a law that could have given life, then verily righteousness would have been by the law. But now it's not. It's imputed uh, on us by faith. Tells us that. That he hopes Israel, some of the Israel might be saved because they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, go about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, which is by faith. So it tells you right there, the law can't save, never did. And then you've got here, Gospel 1, 12 tribes of Israel, prophecy, Israel, faith plus works. Nope, nobody ever got saved by faith and works ever. Now, the works they did were shadows it pointed to the thing that would save and that's the cross I've, I've done a video on people in the past being saved by the cross also and i'll do another one to prove it if you can't find it i'll do it but it says that that they were saved also by the cross all right lost sheep of the house of israel yes jesus's ministry earthly ministry was only for the lost sheep of the house of israel because that was the promise he was supposed to come to them first that is true. Does that mean no Gentiles ever got saved? No. We see we see Gentiles uh, having faith. Matter of fact, the two people Jesus mentions as people of great faith, uh, Naaman, who was cleansed of the leprosy in the Old Testament um, by the prophet, and then uh, the woman that was uh, in a is starving that that fed the prophet. Remember, was it um, Elijah? I think was it Elijah? Elijah? Is it? I hate that. I'm sorry. Anyway, there was a famine and she gave him the last cake she made and they were going to, her and her son were just going to sit there and die. But God kept filling up her thing with oil and flour until the end of the famine because she stepped out in faith. Both of them, Gentiles. We see that the uh, centurion 
comes to Jesus. The woman who had a possessed daughter, she was a Gentile because he said, I don't give bread to, from the children and give it to dogs. Dogs are people outside the house. They were unbelievers. They were Gentiles, right? But it didn't matter. He still healed her daughter. <laughs> so it, it, the thing is, he did speak a certain way differently. But is the gospel message that saves Jewish people different than ones that say, no, of course not. Of course not. He's not, he tells you that it, don't be a respecter of persons like that. Rich or poor, nationality, male or female. There's none of that in Christ. Do you understand? None of it. Uh, but we, we do get caught up in these things and it can't see it. And then you have over here, gospel too, body of Christ, mystery, Gentiles, mystery. Okay. I want to give you a short mystery was that Gentiles would be grafted into God's kingdom, would be grafted in and Jew and Gentile would be one. You see hints of it all through the old Testament. Jesus said, I have a pe I have sheep, not of this fold. I have a people that are not a people. So the people outside tells Abraham to look up the stars, you know, you can't number them in this, the grains of sand. That's how many of his children is going to be. That's people of faith. The same are the children of Abraham. So, and you've got circumcision and uncircumcision. That's true. Peter was sent to the, given the gospel of the circumcision. Does that mean the gospel message was different? No, it's the same gospel message. The death, burial, and resurrection gives everlasting life to those who trust in him right? It's imputed righteousness. You believe on Christ, you get God's righteousness. Same message. The target audience is what changed. The gospel, my gospel, he says, my gospel differentiating himself from the Judaizers false gospel and the gospel of the circumcision. So my gospel was the same gospel as Peter's, just that I go to the Gentile. So Paul's mission field changed different than Peter's. The message did not. All right. Now, Paul was very good at clarifying that not only are you saved by grace, but you cannot add works or you're not understanding that Christ did the work. And then who are you trusting? You or Christ? You're trusting you. James also understood salvation by grace. Because he says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. He knows that Abraham didn't do works to get saved. But he's telling uh, the 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad that if they want their faith to be made perfect, that faith without works is dead being alone, meaning it's not productive. It doesn't say non-existent or can't save you. Uh, and save, it depends on the context. Saved here. These people are already saved, believing Israelites. Okay. So it's about making their faith profitable. But he understood it. He understood it was the death, burial, and resurrection that saved. In the book of Hebrews, whether you believe it's Paul or somebody else that wrote it, I believe it's Paul. You can see all the shadows of how the Old Testament did not save. It was all used. It says it's a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. So you see Paul preaching to Jews also. His gospel was preached to Jews. Did he change the gospel message when he talked to a Jewish person? No. No. You can see it. He, 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 why? Just like Stephen, when he preached to men of Israel, it's the same gospel message. Look at what Stephen preaches to the group when they uh, stone him. Uh, I may have even pulled that up. I had it pulled up in Acts. It says Stephen was preaching. The, let me see. Stephen gets stoned. Yeah. So uh, I'll pull that up. But I mean, it, it's all over the place. All right. I can't. Why can't I ever find uh, King James? For, they always... I'm just used to it. it. I think King James is a really good version. Not the only one. I think Geneva's good. Young's Literal's good. But I compare them all. All right. Let's see. Uh, uh, NIV, ESV, I can't even use them. All right. So you see you see here where um, uh, Stephen is preaching to them. And let me see. 
Yeah, and they, they stoned Stephen here. And he's telling the whole story about, I mean, all their ancestors. that They were in Egypt, and the bush, uh, God appeared in a bush, uh, angel of the Lord, I believe that was Jesus in the bush burning, uh, speaking to him. And he goes back and tells him everything, all the shadows, right? And he says, uh, which also our fathers that came, this is a uh, act seven. I'm starting down at 45, but the whole page is, is, is Stephen going through the whole journey of Israel, confirming who Jesus is brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, saith the prophets. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Had not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Okay, so the physical circumcision was a picture of the true circumcision of the heart that would be done in all believers, Jew or Gentile. You see, that's why fleshly circumcision doesn't profit anything. These were all shadows. So when you divide it as a dispensation of physical circumcision and uh, Old Testament laws and works that saved people, but then he changed to grace, he's God, he doesn't change. He changed how he dealt with people, but he's he's only saved people one way, and that's through his son. Jesus said, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. There wasn't another way. If you could be saved through Old Testament laws, why did Christ have to die? He didn't. This is what's so heartbreaking. So you get you see, if you think works once worked, then you think works might work, and then you think works works will work again, but they don't. Works never work. Okay, only the work of Christ saved so you can see how stephen says um which of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted and they slain them which showed before showed before the coming of the just one that's jesus of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it tells you right there they didn't keep it nobody was saved by it when they heard these things, they were not, they were cut to their heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. That means they were mad. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, Stephen now looked up steadfastly into the heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they, the reason they got mad is that's the vision of Daniel. You see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. That's why I tell people, Son of Man is a bad bad verse to use to try to prove he's not divine because that's exactly what it, it proves that he is divine in daniel's vision and they knew what he was talking about and that made him mad and they cried with a loud voice and and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses laid their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was saul who was that that was saint paul before he was saved and they stoned him and as they're killing him, as these massive stones are bashing him in his skull, he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he had fell asleep. See, when a believer dies, they don't die. Their euphemism is they sleep. So um, we're all promised the same, a glorified immortal body, just like Jesus is. We're saved the same way. It was clearer, it's clearer once it was opened up to the Gentiles, even in Acts, it says, you don't, you find yourself unworthy of everlasting life. Behold, I turn to the Gentiles. It was like, okay, Israel, I'm done. As a whole, I gave you the oracles of God, prophesied about Jesus. He fulfilled every every prophecy you still murder them and now that i've come back with another chance for you to repent from that it's like peter preaching on pentecost three thousand of them repented they they stopped disbelieving and started to believe and then felt guilt for crucifying him or calling for his crucifixion that's the repentance for salvation that the jews had to do so uh and and you know paul tells the Athenians on Mars Hill. He he winked at your ignorance, 
but now commands all men everywhere to repent of what? Of thinking God dwelled in idols, right? And turn to faith in Christ. It's the same message, okay? They are to turn to faith in Jesus. The repentance is a change of mind of what they thought was going to get them to heaven or get them everlasting life to change their mind and trust Christ for it and to believe he is the promised one. But you can see, okay, well, I take it to the Gentiles. I go to the Gentiles. And so did Jewish people still get saved? Yes, of course. There's still a remnant of, of Jewish believers that were getting saved. Did Paul, his Paul's gospel get preached to Jews? Yeah, he preached in the synagogues. He preached the kingdom of God, just like every other apostle and Jesus himself did. When Peter was sent to the circumcision, it wasn't the gospel that changed. It was his target audience. Did he preach to Gentiles? Yes, he did. Cornelius was a Gentile. God had to show him a vision of clean and unclean food so that he would enter into the home. So the gospel message is the same. In other words, why would Peter be sent to a Gentile to teach him a Jewish gospel? He wouldn't. It's the same gospel message. Please hear me, people. All right, we're going to go over the mystery there. Uh, but the mystery is not what you think. Um, the mystery is that Gentiles are also God's people and we're all one in Christ. That's the mystery, that Gentiles would be fellow heirs. That was the mystery. All right. All right, guys, I, I hope I gave you enough to at least prove that they all did preach the same gospel ultimately, just said it in a different way, but it's the same message. All right, God bless.